Hi, my name is Leslie Darling, and today I'm going to walk you through how to make an eco print. There are many different styles of eco prints, so today I'll be showing you a simple technique you can try at home. Well, the basic chemistry that allows for natural dyes to bind to the cloth has been in use for thousands of years. This particular method of natural dyeing is arguably a newer innovation. To begin, you'll need a clean piece of fabric. You can work with either a cellulosic fiber, such as cotton or linen, or you can use a piece of wool or silk. Aside from being clean, there's nothing special you need to do with the fabric to prepare it for dyeing. In natural dyes, the use of a metallic mineral agent, such as alum or iron, is what creates a permanent and lightfast bond that allows the plants to stick to cloth without fading or washing out. Most times, this step is done before adding the plants, but for this sample, we'll use iron at the end. Many types of leaves will work for this process, as most leaves are rich in flavonoids and tannins. Today I'll be working with fresh rose leaves. Some other plants that you have in your yard or could easily find include oak or maple leaves, ash, staghorn sumac, and many others. Because this technique creates a print of the leaf shape, I'll be looking for leaves that don't have many blemishes, such as insect bites or other damage. If you need to harvest the leaves before you're able to use them right away, you can store them in the refrigerator for up to a couple of days. Working on a fold, I vary the orientation of the leaves. Some leaves have waxy tops that prevent the evaporation of water from the plants. This helps them survive in dry environments. But the bottom of the leaf contains small pores, called stoma, where the leaves exchange oxygen with the world around them. These small pores also make it easier to extract tannins or dyes, so when I lay the leaves stoma side down, I'll be able to get a darker print at the end. Once you've arranged the leaves to your liking, begin at one side of the fabric and carefully roll it up. Different techniques for eco-printing may have additional steps, but we'll keep this one simple. Some folks choose to roll the entire bundle onto a dowel or a piece of PVC pipe. However, these tools are not necessary and you could do quite well just by rolling the fabric back on itself. The trick is to roll the piece tightly so that the leaves are in constant contact with the fabric. This contact creates the most precise print. Tight rolling can result in crisp and graphic pieces, while a looser roll will have a more watercolored and subdued aesthetic, which we'll see in this particular project. After rolling up the bundle, it's tied tightly with string to keep everything together. We then place the bundle into a steamer, or even submerge it in water. A veggie steamer like you have in your kitchen would work perfect for this. Just add a couple of inches of water, and then over medium heat, 
Steam the bundle for around an hour. During this time, the heat and action of the steam extracts the tannin dye from the rose leaves. The tannins will bind easily to the cloth, and though it might not be very visible immediately, this extraction process is certainly occurring. Once the bundle has steamed for an hour, allow it to cool so you don't burn your hands when you're working with it. As you unwrap the bundle, it might seem like nothing has happened because the tannins that we're working with have a very subtle color, as many leaves do. You may see only a pale yellow, a beige, or a tan. But once we remove these leaves, we're going to add our mineral mordant, and these will help permanently bind the tannins to the fiber, as well as create a change in the color that will really bring out the definition of the leaves. Iron, or ferrous sulfate, or rusty objects soaked in water can be used for this part of the step. Simply dip the fabric into the iron water and watch the magic occur. If you don't see the reaction happening quickly, you may need to leave the piece soaking in the water for some amount of time. If you still don't see a change after several hours or overnight, this may indicate that the water does not have enough dissolved iron in it. So in this case, you would want to add more rusty objects or ferrous sulfate to make a stronger iron solution. Humans across the globe have been creating fabric with plants for over 50,000 years. Hopefully, the simple how-to in this video will get you inspired to explore with the plants in your own environment and create your own natural dye pieces. Plant-based dye techniques offer us so much in the way of sustainable futures, from giving new life to stained items to reimagining commercial fashion. Plant dyes have been a part of our shared human history throughout our existence, and they continue to offer us a bright way forward. For more information or for questions, you can find me, Leslie Darling, online at the website listed below or on Instagram. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.